Okay, got this one figured out. And this one threw me for a little bit of a loop until I took a little time to trace out what's going on. So, with it hooked up, was getting an expulsion of air right here at the pulse port, right here. And that's bolted to the engine. That's where the signal from the engine is going to come through. So, if you look in here, I'll get up as close as I can. So there's that port to the pulse in the engine. Comes out right here. And the way those gaskets are shaped, these two holes are connected. And same thing for this big reservoir right here. So. Ah! hate it when I drop that kind of junk. Hands are getting cold. I need to go in the house and warm up by the fire. Anyway, so that's the gasket that was in there. So, with the way everything's shaped, that means it's wide open. As so you can see, there's the hole right here. So basically, that was a... This is getting ridiculous. That was a wide open passage to the outside when I'd go to pump it up. Which means that reservoir needs to be sealed so this was part of that bigger bulk kit then it's not the right one for this particular carburetor that gasket see now that covers that up and it forces those passages to act as they should so let's put this back together real quick and I'll put the <sighs> put some pressure to it and show you Hopefully I can minimize dropping this stuff anymore. Okay. Okay. Now you notice I haven't put the cover on the uh, the metering side yet. As long as that needle is seating, you're going to be able to test this side without it on there. So I'm going to go up to ah, this bulb is starting to be shot. <laughs> I want to go up past past nine here, but it may not let me. To, there we go. All right. You guys see that? Now it's moving ever so slightly. This is pumped up harder than it needs to be. Six is about it. I already know that this gasket has a slow leak. It's just the composition of the gasket. I see that all the time, especially with these aftermarket kits. Now if I touch this lever, like a pulse from the engine, See, that bleeds down to nothing real quick. So we'll pump it back up. That's holding pretty well. For this carb, I'm going to say that that is about as good as she's going to get. So another reason I like to do this in this order is if there's any question about whether you've got that little lever set too high, when you go to put this gasket on this one's not one that indexes in it just lays in there but when you go to put that on and you put the cover on if you've got something set too high it's gonna immediately just bleed right down to nothing and this one's not doing that it is bleeding down but that's that leaky leaky gasket that we talked about earlier although I might have spoke too soon that is set just a smidge high. So there's no real <laughs> good way of doing this. Even the manual says you gotta bend this lever. So you just wanna go slow and slight. So you don't wanna go too much. You bend these things too many times and they're out of shape and they're not worth a damn. So I probably moved that, I don't know, 
thirty seconds of an inch, maybe. Man, these gaskets don't like to lay down right when it's cold. Someday, you guys will see me in a shop, and it has a wood stove. There we go. She's not moving any faster with tension on it. So anyway, that's the theory behind using these vacuum, or excuse me, these pressure testers on a carb. You're looking for air leaks. The gaskets, especially on the, the fuel pump side, I don't know what the hell it is these days, they are porous. They don't hold as well as they should. If it's too terrible, I won't use it. And I say, this one's not bad. It's not going to be enough to leak fuel out. But I've... I have gone so far as to coat these things with a gasket sealer if all else fails. But typically using an OEM kit, you're better off than you are with the aftermarkets. Alright, so I had that pumped up past six. We're still about four. I'm going to call this carb good. So back to the, the testing. You're primarily testing the fuel circuit as it goes through the pump side to the base of that needle that's where you've got to hold pressure so if it bleeds off too fast it's going to be leaking fuel either out of one of these gaskets or past the needle going into your carb and flooding your engine out either way you don't really want that happening if you can't diagnose where it's at visually you can do the soap test uh, I keep a bucket, of, not a bucket, but a little coffee can of water. Dunk this right into there under pressure. You'll know damn certain real fast where she's leaking at. If you see it leaking from the nozzle inside the carburetor throat, that's almost always going to be that metering needle. On some of the wall bros that have a little access plate under there with that small gasket, that's covering up your your screw circuits there, uh, that can be where the leak is too when you get it out of the nozzle. But if you're seeing a leakage around the perimeter here, that's your gasket. And you can't tighten those screws too much. I've got this one as tight as it'll go without doing some damage to the carburetor. So, anyway, I know that's long-winded, but that's, that's the basic theory behind using one of these things to, to test a carburetor.